me out a day in the shop. So customer brought it in and the check engine lights on and his code is for his rear O2 sensor. Now on these, the rear O2 sensor is not gonna have any effect on the way the car drives. It's strictly there to monitor the converter and to make sure that the converter is doing its job. Um, I already pulled the seat out because on the rear O2 sensor on this thing, the connector is underneath the seat. So it's just a hell of a lot easier if you just pull the seat out. We're gonna go inside the car and I'm gonna show you what I've looked at already and why I'm leaning towards there's an actual problem on the heater circuit and not the actual O2 sensor itself. So let's go take a look and see what we got. Okay, so we went ahead and took the driver's seat out of this thing because it makes it a heck of a lot easier to work on the O2 sensor wiring and see what's going on with it. So what we're gonna do is uh, go on our scan tool and we're gonna go under uh, data, which is this third one here and it's kind of hard to see. Um, then we're gonna look and see what this uh, sensor two O2 sensor is doing. So I'm gonna start it up real quick and put this down. Then if we scroll down, bank one sensor two is right here, and it's completely flatlined. If you compare it to sensor one, that's working, um, nothing's happening. So what we're gonna wanna do is just double check the wiring before we condemn an O2 sensor. So what we're gonna do is shut it off, leave the key on, and see what we got here, so. Car shut off. We're gonna unplug this. This is a four wire O2 sensor. So this black and white wire is going to be our power feed for our heater circuit. And this red and yellow wire is gonna be the uh, ground side for the heater. And that's duty cycled by the PCM. It keeps applying a ground on and off and that heats up the O2 sensor. Basically gets it up to operating temperature faster. Um, so this red wire here is our signal wire and that's the signal that the PCM receives from the O2 sensor and the black and red wire is gonna be the ground. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a test light and we're going to put it on a ground and then we're gonna check this black and white wire which is our power feed to our heater. And we wanna make sure that we have power and just by checking it, you can see that it lights up. So what we also want to do is make sure that our signal wire is working. So what you can do is you can take that power feed from the heater and you can apply it to the actual sensor or the uh, signal wire. So the way we're going to do that, it's kind of hard to do uh, with a camera here. So we're going to back probe this black and white wire. And just, once again, we're just going to make sure we have power to it. And then we are going to take our test light, put it right on the, uh, the power wire. And then we are going to go right to the signal wire, which is the bottom right, right here. And if you look in the background, I don't know if it's gonna show up. Let's see if I can kind of hold on to both at the same time. Let's see what we can do here. So with that hooked up, if you look on the scanner, you can see that we now have power on it. And it's showing 1.25 volts because that might be the maximum amount that the, uh, uh, the maximum voltage that that O2 sensor can see. It's probably predetermined when they design the PCM. So we know that that's okay. Um, we can check the ground on that circuit the same way. We can use our test light and check that red and black wire just by going to it and seeing if the test light lights up. And the test light's working. So we know that on the PCM itself, the signal, the ground for the O2 sensor signal is working and then we know the 12 volt is working. The only thing that we don't know is the duty cycle. So what we can do is take a voltmeter and I happen to have it right here. We're going to take our voltmeter, and then uh, let's see if that shows up. And all we're going to do is we're going to test 
in both wires for the heater circuit. So you're gonna have one on the heater power and then one on the heater ground. So now you can see we've got 12 volts. So the only thing that can kind of throw you for a loop is if this ground feed is actually grounded to the vehicle. But uh, if you got something like that, you would get a heater circuit code <clears throat> because the vehicle needs to see that um, the ground is also needs to see the power feed to complete the circuit. So we know all of our wiring is good on this thing. So the next thing that we're going to do is replace the O2 sensor and then we'll uh, come back and retest everything and then we'll look on the scan tool and make sure that it's working right. Okay, now we got our new O2 sensor installed um, and you can see we're getting the voltage down here. It's looking like it's like 80 millivolts. Um, it's running a little high and that's probably because the uh, catalytic converter is storing a lot of oxygen so it's nice and hot. Um, so, you know, I'm going to say that this thing's fixed, but, uh, you know, everything's working right now. So just testing an O2 sensor on the, on the O2 sensor itself, you know, if you're not checking your powers and your grounds and your heater circuits and all that stuff, you're just giving yourself a lot more trouble. Um, so it doesn't take that long to do well, on a car like this. It might because you got to pull the seat, but, uh, you know, knowing your circuits, knowing what you need to do to diagnose the problem correctly is, is half the battle on these. And you're trying to work quick. You want to be able to fix the car as fast as you can and get it out the door. Okay, so the one thing I do want to say on these, they're really easy to check as long as you know what you're looking for and as long as you're reading your wiring diagrams properly. I mean, a heater circuit's got a power and a ground and it's duty cycled. The, the sensor itself, the O2 sensor generates voltage. So it's going to get that on a signal wire. You put power on a signal wire, use a test light so you don't smoke your PCM. You know, that's something that as long as you know what you're doing, it's pretty safe. You can do this with a cheap scanner too. You know, I think the one that I had was like 75 bucks and you're able to look at O2 sensor millivolts. So as long as you have something, you know, like a cheap pocket scanner, you can do this at home and it's, it's not that hard. So uh, once again, if this helped you out, you know, thanks for watching and then uh, we'll see you next time.